Richard Sheridan, Chief Joy Officer, How Great Leaders Elevate Human Energy and Eliminate Fear. Discover how to cultivate a joyful, authentic, and effective workplace in this summary of Chief Joy Officer, How Great Leaders Elevate Human Energy and Eliminate Fear by Richard Sheridan. The book explores the vital topic of leadership, focusing on embracing authenticity, humility, and optimism. Learn how you can create a culture that fosters collective learning, cooperation, and caring for one another, driving both personal and organizational success. This enlightening and practical guide will help you understand the difference between being a boss and a leader, while showing you how to use a systems thinking approach to address challenges and maximize your workplace's potential. Embrace authenticity and humility. Fostering an environment where employees feel comfortable revealing their authentic selves and emotions can lead to better understanding and support within the workplace. This includes embracing vulnerabilities and displaying humility in leadership roles, acknowledging that every task within the organization is important and deserving of equal respect. Too often in the modern workplace, we are compelled to hide our true selves and emotions, creating a disconnect between our work and personal lives. This disconnect can be further exacerbated for leaders who may feel pressured to maintain a confident and strong image, despite their internal feelings of stress, anxiety, or being overwhelmed. A profound exercise facilitated by the nonprofit organization ELE's Place illustrates the power of sharing our genuine emotional states with others. Participants wear a white mask and write their public emotions on the outside, while expressing their true feelings on the inside. Upon sharing, the participants often discover shared experiences and emotions, fostering greater understanding and connections between them. This concept can be applied to the workplace, particularly for leaders who struggle with authenticity. By sharing their authentic selves, leaders and colleagues can create a more supportive and cohesive work environment. It may seem counterintuitive, but embracing vulnerability can lead to more robust connections and teamwork. Similarly, humility is a critical leadership value that shouldn't be overlooked in business. Demonstrating humility means recognizing the importance of all tasks and treating every role within the organization with equal respect. A leader who willingly partakes in tasks typically assigned to subordinates, such as tidying up or emptying the dishwasher, sets an example for the entire team. By doing so, they illustrate that every job is essential, and every person's contribution is valuable. Embracing authenticity and humility in the workplace fosters a healthy environment where individuals can freely express themselves. It enables leaders to break down barriers and establish a respectful and meaningful culture for employees to thrive in. Embrace optimism in leadership. Edward de Bono's Six Thinking Hats highlights the importance of adopting different thinking styles in various situations. In business, while it's essential to have black hat thinkers focusing on potential issues, leaders should also embrace a yellow hat approach to lead their teams optimistically. To foster a positive and engaged workplace culture, leaders shouldn't shy away from new ideas and should encourage innovation by abandoning traditional power structures. In his 1985 book, Six Thinking Hats, psychologist and philosopher Edward de Bono introduced six distinct approaches for tackling any situation. For instance, white hat thinkers rely on objective facts, while red hat thinkers focus on emotions. The black hat approach emphasizes potential risks, and many perceive it as an engineering mindset. Though this type of thinking is crucial, leaders should also adopt the yellow hat perspective an optimistic stance that focuses on the possibility of success. A well-balanced organization needs a mix of white, red, and black hat thinkers. However, leaders should embody the yellow hat mentality to encourage optimism and engagement within their teams. In practice, this can mean supporting others' ideas with enthusiasm and taking action to promote progress. Many successful business leaders have visited the author's company to learn about its joyful, innovative culture, characterized by minimal hierarchical structures and highly engaged teams. The author often suggests that these leaders leave their offices and physically join their team members to foster a more collaborative environment. 
While many initially respond with nervous laughter or skepticism, the leaders who take this advice often reap exceptional results. One notable example is Ron Sale, the former leader of GE Global Services in New York. Sale removed the physical barriers within his workplace and started regularly interacting with his team members. As a result, his team became more engaged and satisfied with their work environment, and others at GE began adopting Sale's approach. The key takeaway is to embrace optimism in leadership. Don't let the fear of failure, or black hat thinking, hold you back from trying new ideas that could enhance your organization's happiness and productivity. Joy in serving others. True joy is derived from serving others rather than just serving oneself. By building a culture focused on service, you can spread happiness and positively impact both your personal and professional life. This is exemplified by the story of the bookshelf, the tale of the three bricklayers, and Mike, the kind-hearted McDonald's worker. In 1968, a young boy decided to surprise his parents by assembling a new bookshelf they had just bought. He placed books, connected their stereo, and even played his mother's favorite record when they arrived. His parents' reactions of speechlessness and even tears made him realize that true joy comes from serving others, a lesson he carried into his business career. To cultivate such a culture of service, one can look to the parable of the three bricklayers. Each was questioned about their work, one saw his job as merely laying bricks, another as building a wall, but the third proudly envisioned himself constructing a cathedral. This man's joy came from his belief that his humble labor was part of a greater purpose, serving others in some way. This applies to any business or role, finding joy in serving others is possible regardless of one's occupation. Even something as simple as cleaning tables can bring about profound joy. At a McDonald's in the Detroit airport, an older worker named Mike performed the mundane tasks of wiping tables and clearing away trash with great care and attention. But his service went beyond mere cleanliness, he would offer assistance if someone was missing a napkin or engage in conversation, wishing them a pleasant flight. Though these may be small gestures, they were reflections of a remarkable attitude. When Mike was replaced by a younger worker, the author noticed that this newcomer also approached his work with a service-minded attitude, offering kindness and aid to customers. Interestingly, this was not a coincidence, the branch manager had purposefully created a culture built around service, knowing the value of such little acts in a competitive environment. By establishing this service-oriented culture, the branch manager proved himself not just as a manager but as a leader. Embracing the joy in serving others and fostering this attitude within a team can lead to a happier and more fulfilling personal and professional life. Leaders versus Bosses, a Culture Shift Leaders and bosses differ in their approach to managing a team, and transitioning from a boss-oriented culture to leader-oriented one can be highly beneficial. While bosses command and demand with authority, leaders influence, motivate, and foster teamwork. Organizations that prioritize cultivating a leadership culture tend to be more effective, open to experimentation, and innovative. Emphasizing leadership also facilitates a non-hierarchical work environment, empowering teams to make decisions together. Companies like Menlo Innovations exemplify the success of such a culture, but strong systems must be in place to achieve this organizational shift. In the workplace, a boss exercises authority to give orders, while a leader uses their skills to inspire and motivate. Bosses demand strict adherence to rules and often sit atop a hierarchy, whereas leaders encourage critical thinking, teamwork, and a cooperative spirit that can be found on every level. Organizations that nurture leadership culture over a boss-oriented one tend to perform more effectively. A key advantage is their openness to experimentation and innovation. In a workplace dominated by bosses, new ideas require permission, often stifling creativity and ultimately hindering progress. On the other hand, a leadership-focused culture fosters an environment where ideas can be proposed and tested without fear of retribution for mistakes. Such organizations understand the value of learning from and correcting these errors as a team. By emphasizing leadership, organizations can also create a non-hierarchical culture in which the team shares decision-making responsibilities. 
Menlo Innovations illustrates the effectiveness of this approach, where interviews, performance reviews, and key decisions involve input from everyone. This radical approach has led some to be confused about who they report to within the company. The truth is, they report to each other, reinforcing the notion of teamwork and collaboration. Still, it's important to recognize that transitioning to a leader-oriented culture requires robust systems in place to support such a shift. Through prioritizing leadership over traditional boss roles, organizations can unlock higher levels of effectiveness, innovation, and a stronger, more supportive work environment. Embracing Joyful Systems The key to cultivating a joyful organization lies in creating effective systems which remove pain points and reward positive behaviors. To achieve this, it is essential for leaders to recognize the impact of systems on both tasks and team interactions, rather than attributing issues to random occurrences or lack of diligence. Designing systems that foster the desired culture and results can lead to improved outcomes and an atmosphere of collaboration. When we think about joy, systems may not be the first thing that comes to mind. However, establishing a joyful organization is closely linked to focusing on systems. In times of adversity, such as confronting a failed sales pitch or an unhappy customer, businesses tend to overlook the crucial role systems play, often blaming luck or insufficient work ethic. But a wise leader will recognize the potential influence of a flawed system. System thinkers view an organization through the lens of its systems and processes, analyzing how work is distributed, monitored, and simplified. Striving to consistently enhance the workflow, these thinkers rely on systems to achieve their goals. For instance, Menlo's time tracking system requires employees to provide accurate timesheets, allowing the company to confidently estimate timeframes for future projects. This eliminates the need for excessive overtime, reduces software bugs, and combats stress and low morale resulting from overworking. Designing joyful systems entails developing policies that actively reward desirable behaviors instead of merely celebrating individual achievements. The author once assisted Dominique Coster, an R&D team leader in the automotive industry, to foster effective collaboration similar to Menlo's structure. After opening up the office space, which improved collaboration, the author suggested shifting from honoring individual patents to recognizing the collective effort of the entire team, including engineers and accountants. By adjusting their system, Coster's team transformed behavior within the organization, demonstrating the powerful potential of systems in cultivating a joyful work environment. Cultivating a Caring Workplace When employees genuinely care for one another, a vastly positive and supportive work environment is created. By prioritizing emotional well-being, collaborative recruitment practices, and focusing on shared knowledge and experience, companies can foster a workplace culture where people actively look out for each other's best interests. At Menlo, potential recruits are quickly introduced to the company's culture of care during their first interview. By pairing candidates to work together on a joint task, they learn from the onset that at Menlo, teamwork and mutual support are vital. Instead of competing, they must help each other to advance to the next stage of the hiring process. This emphasis on supporting one another continues as employees become part of the company. For instance, a Menlo employee faced difficulties with punctuality due to personal issues. In many organizations, this might have led to termination. However, at Menlo, a co-worker volunteered to pick up the struggling employee every day, ensuring their timely arrival and ultimately saving their job. Additionally, Valuing colleagues as individuals, not just employees, establishes a foundation of genuine care. The author experienced this firsthand with his assistant, Anna. Tasked with managing his numerous international speaking engagements, Anna noticed the author was overworked. To prioritize his well-being, she denied new speaking requests for the month of December, insisting he spend the time with family instead. In a caring workplace culture, not only are personal needs recognized, but so too is the importance of sharing knowledge and experience. Encouraging everyone to learn from one another promotes a sense of unity and mutual growth that further strengthens the workplace community. By fostering an ethos of genuine care and support, 
companies can create a thriving work environment where employees actively look out for each other and prioritize collective well-being. Embracing the learning culture Constant learning is crucial for businesses to survive in today's rapidly evolving world, as demonstrated by the downfall of Borders books. To build a thriving learning culture, leaders must encourage strong reading habits, make books easily accessible, create opportunities for knowledge sharing, and facilitate team teaching among colleagues. This approach not only prepares organizations to adapt better but also fosters a joyous, growth-oriented working environment. In the age of the internet, the ability to learn quickly has become the key to long-term success for businesses. Take the example of Borders Books. Founded in 1971 and employing 20,000 people at its peak, it ultimately fell to Amazon, which was founded in 1994. Borders had 17 years to adapt, but it failed due to a lack of continuous learning within its organization, as emphasized by MIT systems scientist Peter Senge. To build a learning culture within your own business, it's essential to encourage strong reading habits among team members. One way to do this is by creating a free library in the office and ensuring that books are always readily available. Adding an in-house book club or lunch and learn sessions, where team members share insights from books they've read, can also create excitement and spread new ideas. However, it's not enough to simply foster a love of reading. Creating opportunities for team members to teach and learn from each other is crucial. Menlo Innovations, a company known for its learning culture, pairs colleagues together to work on tasks. This approach enables knowledge exchange rooted in different experiences, strengths, and weaknesses, promoting continuous learning within the company. By fostering a learning culture that encourages reading, makes books available, and facilitates knowledge sharing among colleagues, Businesses not only become more resilient and prepared for the future but also create an environment where people derive joy from learning, teaching, and expanding their horizons. In conclusion, Chief Joy Officer E delves into the importance of transforming your organization into a thriving, joyful place of shared growth and cooperation. Building on concepts like authenticity, humility, and optimism, Sheridan helps you create a culture focused on serving people, prioritizing leaders over bosses, and caring for one another. By doing so, you can foster a workplace that is more resilient, prepared for the future, and focused on continuous learning. Through practical tips and inspiring examples, Sheridan demonstrates the power of prioritizing human energy and eliminating fear in cultivating a truly joyful and successful workplace.